Hello everyone, welcome to this tutorial on baking your hair cards in Arnold. Um, I'm quite new to this technique, I was kind of against it for a while just because I prefer my ex normal workflow and I was happy with it and I got the results that I wanted. Um, but I'm starting to realise the merits of doing it this way, so I wanted to share. Um, I've got videos on both now, so if you kind of want to pick through what you prefer. There's pros and cons to each. I like certain aspects of the X normal workflow and I will still hop between each workflow depending on the needs of what I'm creating and whatever's easiest, whatever's fastest. And I've given you all the options you can pick what's best for you. As always, let me know in the comments if you've got any questions or you can email me, message me on ArtStation or join my Discord. I hope you enjoy the video. To begin with, we're just going to create a plane like so, scale it and then we're going to rotate it 90 degrees on the x-axis. This is so that it's facing the correct way when we do the renders. And then we're going to create a camera. Go into orthographic, make sure that's turned on. Create. And then we're just going to move that out of the way a little bit. It doesn't matter how far away you move it, just so long as you don't move it up or down or left to right. And then we're going to create a area light so that we can see what we're doing. Scale that, increase the intensity and increase the exposure. So from there we're going to go into open on or render view like so and then we're just going to hit play. So as you can see it's rendering our current camera view so we can switch that to the camera shape one that we've just created. As you can see the render view is the wrong dimensions so we can change that by coming in here render settings going down to image size and just selecting 2k square so this is going to make this a 2k square we can go change this later on if we want to increase the render size of the image later but for now 2k square is fine so you can see the plane scale now we can see how big we want it so using this as a reference, I'm just going to increase this ever so slightly. You want to take it right up to the view, to the edge of the render view and then just a tiny bit over like that, just to make sure that we completely cover that thing and there's no gaps. Once we've set that scene up and the correct scale and everything, we're going to create the hair cards. I've used XGen Interactive Groom for these like I usually do. Um, you have to lay them out all against the square. So normally when I do it in the X-Gen, I create the cards and then create the low poly and the UVs after. But with this, you're kind of stuck with whatever decisions you make here. So some people like to plan out the cards and use it as a background. Um, I'll link some other tutorial videos in the description. But when you've kind of got enough experience, you can work, you know roughly how you want to lay these out. So yeah, that's what I've got here. So now if I go into the render view and see how that is there and that's how they look laid out on my proper camera shape. Since these are all loosely placed you want to pay particular consideration to the space in between these. You want to make sure that when you lay your UVs over the top you're not clipping. It's quite easy to sort of accidentally layer things over and too close bear that in mind when you're creating those hair cards. So we're going to start with the alpha. Um, I'm going to walk you through how to create each and every material as we go. So I want to first of all get rid of these because we don't want those appearing in the render. We're going to select the backing plane, assign new material, go into Arnold and then we're going to select AI flat. rename this to say hair black. Change the colours black. And then we're just gonna do the same again. A new one. Call it hair white. Keep that as white. And then when we press play on the renderer We've got a nice alpha. Here I like to go into the settings and just change this to 8K. It'll take a little bit longer to render, um, so feel free to make it 4K if you're, if 
PC doesn't want to do all this, but I like to create 8K and then scale it down to 4K just to make sure everything is as crisp as possible. So now that that's rendered, we're going to go File, Save, and wherever you want to locate it, we're going to call that alpha.png. You can just type in what file format you want. So I just do .png, Save, and that's done. Then we're going to create the unique map. So we're going to, once again, assign new material with the hair card selected. Arnold. And then we're going to pick AI Utility this time. And we go to that here. Call this hair unique. And then we're going to go color mode. Uniform ID. And that's going to create a random hair color selection. Obviously this is a color and we want it to be black and white. So what we're going to do once this is rendered is take it into Photoshop and just desaturate the whole thing, and that'll give us the correct map. Unique dot png. Now we're going to create the root map, so assign new material. Arnold AI flat. Call that hair root. And then in color, this time we're going to go to this and select a ramp. And this will just give us a ramp from black to white here. Hit render. And there's our root map. Right, next up we're going to create the ambient occlusion with the hair cards and the backing plane selected. Go to assign new material, Arnold, and we literally just pick AI ambient occlusion. Rename that while I remember. Render, that gives us ambient occlusion. So the next map we're going to create is the height map. Leave the background with the ambient occlusion just to get a nice background. And then this one is a little bit more complicated, so we're going to have to do a few more steps. So selecting the hair, assign new material, Arnold, AI flat. And then we're going to bring up the hypershade window. And we're just going to name this kind of height so we know which one we're doing. Sorry about that. Fix it on this. Using the left window here, we're going to search for AI color correct. Put that here. And then we're going to search for a sampler info. Open up input and then open up point world. We're going to put input R into point world Z, input G, point world Z, input B, point world Z. Out color into color, and there we go. So, what this is going to do is tell the renderer where these are on the Z axis. So, if I just make these visible again. Is the center of the axis and these are super far forward. So really we want these to be kind of like halfway over. So I'm just going to change my settings really quickly. Yeah, put that to k square just so that I can see the renderer better quicker in real time. And I push my plane back. Apply the material. And then another thing we're going to want to do is go into display and change this to raw. This will just give a better colour contrast. With my starters selected, I'm going to push these back to be about halfway over this line here. And you'll start to see the renderer getting more grayscale values as we move them back. So what we're looking for is obviously these pieces in front, we want them to be brighter further away, want them to be darker. So these two currently have quite a lot of white in them, so I'm just going to move them back a little bit more. Okay. Hide the starters. Change my setting back to 8K. 
and let that render. So next up we will do a flow map, nice and easy, sign new material, Arnold, AI utility. Rename that. And then in colour we're going to change that to V surface derivative and that will give us our flow map. Remember to keep this raw setting on for this one and the normal map and the height map just so we get those correct colour settings. I usually like to leave the height, the flow and the normal map until last so that I can just leave this setting on. And finally we'll create the normal map. Yeah, utility once again. So we're going to change the colour mode to normal. And that's that. And that is how I create all my texture maps. So next up I like to bring all of these into Photoshop, give them a check and then group them all into their appropriate folders. This is like what I consider to be my master texture sheet. I like to keep this one in 8K and then resize all the exports into 4K. Uh, this is just so that any edits I do, any like mm, any extra materials I make, like diffuse or specular or something by hand, it's all here. I don't lose anything. And there we have all my maps. I will make the biomaterials available on my ArtStation store, just if you can't be asked to make them. Um, and I will also include the textures I use for my X normal workflow that I also have a video on. But Feel free to save yourself some money and just follow this tutorial. Thanks for watching.